Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're calling in from today. Thank you for dedicating your limited time to spending time uh, with uh, us today. Uh, I'm excited to uh, introduce uh, our speaker today, Corey Gwynn. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about webhooks. So this is the fifth of a fifth and final of a series of webinars that we are presenting on Bright Talk around Meraki APIs and programmability. Uh, these will be remaining on demand. So if this is the first webinar you've caught with us, feel free to go back and check out the previous four because they are kind of building on one another and really bringing you up to speed on uh, some of the possibilities with Meraki APIs. Before I hand it off to Corey, a couple quick uh, housekeeping items. Uh, we are a little bit delayed in terms of what you're seeing and, and when we're broadcasting something and when you see it. So if you have questions during the session, please do leverage the Q and A uh, function within Bright Talk. You'll see it on the right side of your screen. It's question mark icon. Um, try and get those in earlier rather than later, because like I said, there is sometimes a little bit of a delay and uh, we want to be able to answer relevant questions in the moment. Um, that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Corey, and we're going to be talking today about Meraki webhooks, which is uh, a little bit of a different paradigm from the API calls that we've talked about thus far. So go ahead, Corey, take it away. All right. Thanks a lot for that. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, today we're going to talk a lot about webhooks, uh, what this means, how you can use them to better automate your network deployments, as well as stay up to date with any changes um, or alerts that happen within your network. So webhooks, this is a logo you, you might see throughout um, the presentation. And this kind of represents this concept where we are able to deliver um, events to third-party services uh, using um, programmability or automation similar to our existing dashboard API uh, but more in an outbound fashion. So let's take a look at really what all this means. So if you're new to this, or if you haven't seen the other um, sessions, uh, Meraki as a whole, the, the platform is a solution where you can manage not only your wireless access points, switches and firewalls, uh, but also IoT devices such as sensors or um, cameras. Um, and traditionally this, uh, suite of products has all been managed through the web interface, so the Meraki dashboard. And although that's a great way to quickly manage or um, configure your networks, there's often a scenario where you want to automate uh, tasks that you're having to do on a regular basis, or you may want to integrate it with other systems and solutions uh, that your business may need. So diving into what the dashboard may look like, right? So as, as, as soon as you log into the Meraki Cloud dashboard, you're gonna be able to see and manage all of these different uh, components we mentioned. So again, um, seeing a list of all of your access points that are online, um, seeing the topology of how your switches are interconnected and the various devices attached to them. Um, and you'll also be able to see you know, various status um, and logs throughout the dashboard, whether or not you know, a device is offline, um, if you are seeing issues with a particular service, um, or maybe your VPN connection, for example, has gone offline. But what happens when these, these things change? What happens when you are not logged into the dashboard? Um, even if you have an API, um, what is telling you to make those API calls to get a, a, a status update? Um, so that you can start making decisions uh, or changes if necessary um, to address that. So what you can do is basically set up alerts. Now alerts are going to be these conditions um, that you can set on, on particular um, you know, functions uh, within the dashboard, right? So if there's a device that's gone offline um, or a, um, a repeater, um, sorry, has gone offline, um, you can direct those messages to commonly uh, an email, or you could send it to a text message, like just using a, a phone number, or you could use webhooks to programmatically send these alerts to uh, your service. And so these alerts, uh, these webhooks rather, can be configured um, on the same page 
where you can then assign them to the various uh, alerts. So if we want to actually look a little bit deeper and say, okay, what is a webhook? Now, really, a webhook is just an API call that Meraki is going to make to a third-party service. And so we can make that API call. Again, if an IP conflict occurred or an API went offline, Meraki Cloud is going to then make a API request to that third-party service and deliver the contents of that message. Uh, you know, whether or not the alert level is severe or warning, um, or if it's just informational, like some settings were changed, but uh, no uh, problems were created as a result. Now, to get these webhooks uh, into a third-party service, uh, traditionally what you would have to do is um, basically stand up some receiver, something that can listen to the API call from Meraki and then take that information and really shape it so that you can then call some other third-party service. Now, normally these APIs are all unique between the different providers. And so in order to really enable you to send alerts directly from Meraki to a third-party service without any middleware, you'll have to either build the service, which doesn't make sense, uh, or it costs a lot of effort and time, or you can take advantage of webhook payload templates where we enable you to write um, really small uh, files that shape this entire experience, both, both in the, the body or like the contents of the alert, as well as the authentication requirements that you might need. And this really should just streamline that entire process and give you a lot of flexibility as to where uh, these alerts are going to be routed to. Um, a couple of examples of how uh, we've already started implementing this technology. Um, now, within the Meraki dashboard, there is going to be a, a number of included templates, such as WebEx or Slack, Microsoft Teams, all popular messaging services, um, or ServiceNow as an example of how you can track your uh, inventory devices and maybe trigger incidents and as well as just monitor your overall assets. Now, um, we recognize that we're not going to be able to create every single integration and as well as configure those integrations to meet your exact use case. And so in that situation, there are a number of community supported uh, custom templates that you yourself can actually copy into your Meraki dashboard and start using straight away. Or you can extend it or create your own to create that next integration that you need. Now, all of these templates are going to be available on uh, both our developer docs as well as our GitHub repository so that it makes it really easy for you to consume um, these resources. Now, just a kind of a, another set of list of things you can do, uh, and maybe you'll uh, have some other ideas of integrations that will take advantage of webhooks. Uh, but for example, you know, you could send notif uh, notifications to PagerDuty so that your IT team can be aware of, say, a VPN failure. Uh, or you may just have an automation where you can trigger some AWS function um, to update some particular service or run a job when it sees that a new device has been added to the network um, or any other state change that requires some sort of automation to go along with it. Um, we've seen people um, actually capture information about the usage of their networks and then capture bits of those details and put it into Salesforce so that they can start tracking the usage of that network for a particular account. Um, I've seen this with like managed service providers or um, other businesses who have to manage um, a large number of customers and they might sell or manage the, the data networks that provide them. And so keeping tabs on this without having to necessarily log into the dashboard um, could be quite helpful. Um, there's a couple of others, um, you know, again, sending messages, um, which we'll show in more detail with Cisco WebEx. Um, and overall, um, you know, supporting integrations like sending data to uh, Datadog or MongoDB or really any other service where you might want to just collect all of these alerts so that you can perform your own analysis or so that you have a historical record of, of any of these state changes. So just to dive in, um, how you can actually get started. 
It's really straightforward. If you've already have a Meraki account and you've logged in, um, all you would have to do is go to your uh, network-wide alerts page, and this is where you're going to see that list of alerts. Um, once you've gotten to that point, you can then add um, a webhook receiver that can then be assigned to all of these alerts or to individual ones as needed. Now, as I was talking about these templates, um, they are available where you can select them. Um, there's a drop down of those uh, included templates I mentioned. Or uh, you can now edit or create these new templates within the dashboard. Now, I, I should mention that uh, webhook templates as a function or a feature is uh, available today for everyone. Um, but the screen that I'm showing now, these, this new template editor, at this date is currently in beta, uh, but we expect it to be available to everyone um, shortly as well, um, which ultimately is just helping you to create and modify uh, or, and manage these webhook templates for all the different use cases you can dream of. So if I were to uh, look just a little bit deeper into what this new template editor provides you, um, if we start from the left, you'll see that there's going to be a section where we're defining the liquid body. And we'll talk more about liquid in a second. But ultimately, this is the uh, a kind of a language that helps us to write this template where we can help define the shape of it as well as um, use variables to represent, say, the alert data or um, the alert type or the alert level, we can now um, have that information in our payload uh, for that service. Now, in the middle, we will see a section around liquid headers. Now, again, this is a REST API that we're basically making. And to connect to this third party, they often require you to have some authorization headers, um, things like an API key or bearer token. Um, these can all be inserted uh, into this template based on whatever requirements that they have. Again, giving you like total flexibility to really get that square peg in the round hole. Um, this template engine is going to allow you to, to make that happen. Now, off to the right, um, there is just a number of tools um, as far as previewing the type of alerts that you can see, um, the, the type of data that you can uh, expect to manipulate, as well as functionality to test the alert by sending this webhook and its data to that third party service, making sure it all looks good. And then from there, you can then start assigning it to real alerts. So just to take a look at um, a couple of integrations built with this uh, new capability. Um, Webhooks with Datadog uh, was a really uh, great example where we needed to uh, start capturing a lot of our uh, Meraki alerts into the Datadog platform. Um, a, a customer had already had been using this service and they wanted to capture this for various reasons, uh, as I mentioned, IT, as well as analytics, um, general overall health of the network. And um, luckily, uh, Datadog had already built some form of an integration using our normal dashboard API. And with that, they have certain capabilities where if we were to specify this resource is coming from Iraqi, it even highlights uh, you know, our brand and, and logo in there. Um, but the real takeaway here is um, what we were able to do is capture an alert shape it a little bit to meet the needs of the Datadog um, service, uh, add the API um, keys or inside of the headers. And with that, we're able to now deliver all of these alerts directly into Datadog. Really simple. This template is available for everyone um, free of charge. You just go into our GitHub repository, and then you can add this template into your network, as well as um, configure your Datadog API key, and you'll be good to go. A similar um, uh, you know, example of where you can connect webhook templates to a third-party service is with a simple integration with WebEx. Now, WebEx offers a couple of ways that we can send messages into the platform. Um, and one of the simplest ways is by using their incoming webhooks uh, plugin. And what this ultimately does is it provides you a URL that you can now send text messages to that will then appear in your chat window. 
Uh, it's really straightforward to set up. And as part of today's demo, I will actually walk through configuring this so we can see truly how it all works. Now, for the more advanced users, um, using the full API provided by WebEx, you can use additional features um, such as adaptive cards, which is a framework WebEx provides. It really enables you to not only to shape that uh, JSON and the data, um, but beyond um, basic markdown, you can include things like images and potentially other actionable items. Um, and uh, you know, just a nicer look and feel to the overall experience. Now, uh, WebEx actually offers like a card designer that helps you really build the, the overall structure. And then you combine that with Meraki and our liquid templates, and then you can ultimately build a, a really awesome looking integration with WebEx. Now, again, we wouldn't expect you to have to write all of these from scratch. And so all of these templates, again, are available on our repository. So you can find all of this information and more on meraki.io and specifically webhooks for what we've discussed today. And so with that, I'm going to pop over and um, really get into the, the demo here. Um, this is where we can actually see all of the things we've talked about and more. All right, so if I start at the, at the beginning here, refresh, okay. Good. So I am on the Meraki Developer Hub. You can get there by going to meraki.io, or you can um, see the actual address in the browser here. Now, once we're here, you can see all of our normal documentation, including our dashboard API docs, um, things around um, location services or our captive portal. Um, but really, today, we're going to focus on webhooks. And this provides you with all of the details um, that I really covered in the intro slides around how you configure it, what they work, uh, or how you can modify them, as well as the type of data that you would expect to see from any given alert. Um, so that it really gives you a context as to how you can integrate this service and write templates around it. Now, with that, you can then um, travel further down and see the description around all of the payload templates, which again, allow us to create these custom integrations. Um, so if any of this uh, information was too fast for you, um, certainly read these docs because it includes all of these details plus a little bit more, um, including um, all of the different WebEx, uh, sorry, Webhook integrations. So if we pop down to um, Webhook integrations here, we're going to see you know, a number of either the included templates or the ability to get the custom templates provided in our repository. So if I were to click on that, that's going to take me to GitHub. And you can see there's a number of these templates that you can see. And if I were to just go into one, maybe that data dog one, you'll see that it consists of really just how it works. Um, the API path, the, the URL you're going to be sending the webhook to, as well as how you manage your security, and then finally, these template files. And so in the case of Datadog, um, there was two templates, one of which um, is the header, where we uh, define our authentication. In this case, they have an API call key called DD API key. And then we're going to put in our variable for that shared secret. And I'll, uh, we'll see how this works in a second here. Um, so there's a number of templates. I don't have to go through them all. Um, but if that was the liquid, um, sorry, if that was the headers, this is what the body would look like. Um, and it's just a few lines of code, um, mostly just a little bit of logic to understand or to map different alert levels um, to their syntax, as well as to just kind of shape the way that um, that those results are going to appear. So um, let's actually start playing with this so we can see what all of this means and how you can um, actually start using this today. So I'm going to go over into the Meraki dashboard. And so I'm just on my, uh, my lab network here. And I've just navigated to network-wide alerts. And this is going to be, uh, again, that list of all of the different um, you know, alerts or conditions that I can check for. And if 
any of those are met, I can then trigger a uh, an alert. Now, an alert could be sent, like I mentioned, it could be sent to an email, so I could put in my email, or it could be sent to um, a webhook, and then any of my webhook um, receivers would be available for me to assign it to. So the next thing was, well, how do I actually create these webhook receivers? Well, if I scroll all the way down to this page, you'll see this whole section around webhooks. Oops. And each one of these records is a webhook receiver. And you can see, again, I have a number of different services that I'm sending my alerts to, like Jira tickets or sending it to WebEx or even ServiceNow. And I also have a number of templates that I was able to assign. So I could create these different receivers and then I say, which template do I want to assign it to? One of my built-in ones or maybe something that I've created myself. So um, what I'd like to do next is actually create a webhook template so we can see how this all works. All right, I'll leave this. OK, great. So now I've, I've, I've clicked on the template editor, and it's taken me first to a list of available templates. Uh, your list will be short if this is the first time you've seen this page. You'll likely just have these included templates here, whereas there's a number of these that I have created before, like I just showed you in that drop down list. Um, now, if I want to create a new one, I just click this button here. It says create new template. And now I'm in that template editor that I discussed earlier. And so we will just call this, let's say, a, um, Bright Talk Demo. And oops. Demo and uh, with that, I can load in a couple of examples. So I don't want to write a template from scratch. Let's see what the standard Meraki template looks like. So I just selected from my toolbox over here the standard template. And we can see that this is the shape of this template. And what it we're doing is basically defining a JSON blob here. And these are all of the different variables, uh, the properties. And these are basically the variables that we can then render as they come in. And so they're named the same, and that's because this is the default template, and so it's really straightforward. And so when I say generate preview, it's then rendering these different values into, um, into their proper value. So these different variables will then be rendered. And I can also test on different alert types. And so we can see in this section here that the alert type is going to change as I select different types of alerts. I can also see that the alert level and things like that are going to change, uh, which are really important when I want to start creating logic um, or knowing how I might be rendering some of these templates. So just having a play through each one of these different alert types helps you to kind of understand what you are writing your template around. And Meraki template is really the default shape. Now, here's a couple of other templates, such as Microsoft Teams, where they expect this JSON to look wildly different. It looks more like um, some adaptive cards. And again, it's just a JSON structure. But now we're going to be using these alerts or um, this webhook data that again is going to be provided. If I if I pop over to another tab, you'll see it's the exact same uh, that Meraki um, shape, but it's the resolved data. And so I can use again this this de these details to help understand what this template is doing, where information is going to be presented, and then how it's going to be rendered. Now uh, I can explore just a few other templates here to see how they look. You can see. Um, they all are changing. They all have a very different shape. Um, some of them are quite simple. Some of them are quite extensive. Um, but let's actually test um, some of these features end to end and actually send a webhook to somewhere else. And so what I like to do for this is um, I just use this free site. Uh, it's called Webhook Site. So webhook.site. And this free service will provide you with a temporary webhook server. And 
with that, you can use this provided URL. So I can say actually copy URL. And I can send my webhooks there while I'm testing this out. And so what I can do is just I copied that and I hit paste. And so now if I hit send webhook test, oh, I have to save my template first. Thank you. I hit save. All right, template has been saved. And if I hit send web test hook or webhook test, we can see it's been enqueued. What that means is it's been sent. And we can look over here and we'll see that we got a message. We got a post and we got all of this content. So that's going to be the template that we're basic or the, res the resolved template that we're sending to our service. Let me show just a couple of other examples that look really basic. So I can say um, something static, say static. I'll say, hello world. Hit generate preview. It says, hello world. If I send my webhook test and I pop over there, we're going to then see, well, hold on. That didn't work. I have to save. Hello world. Let's just do this real quick. Oh, I guess I'm in demo mode. Um, give me one second. Let me just pop over to another screen. Let's try this one more time. Um, and this time, I'm going to do it with my permissions correct. So we're in alerts. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to create my template. I'm going to create my template over here. And now I can do this. Let's say, right, demo, hit save. Everything looks like it's saving properly. I don't have anything in here. These are all good errors to discover together. Test, hello world, generate preview. That all looks good. I'm going to save. Oh, it already exists. Let's call this demo too. Demo two, something saved. All right, there we go. Now we've done that. So I'm going to now get my URL again. I'm copying that URL and pasting it into here. I'm sending my test webhook. And now when I pop back over, I see hello world. All right, demo success. Um, now to do something more dynamic. Um, I will um, do something dynamic, say dynamic. And now I want to actually pull like a variable. So in this case, we can say, what was the alert level? As an example. And if I hit generate preview, I can see it says now critical. Or maybe I want to see like, um, what was the type? And if I remember it was called alert type. If I hit generate preview, power supply went down. And so what I'm able to do now is just really create this whole structure here to do whatever I want. I can add messages. If I wanted to say, like, what was the network, um, you know, network, I can then pull in things like the network name, um, network name, generate preview, and it pulls in my network. So again, all of these variables are available via the webhook data section. Um, and so you can figure out like device name or network name, organization name, all of these things are available. And then you can really start um, creating these templates to do um, cool things. Um, now there's sometimes you want to um, actually do um, something fancier, like uh, maybe a conditional or something of that nature. And so there are a number of ways we can do that. And I will just copy in a whole bunch of things real quick, just to see. Um, let's do this. So there are various statements that you can do in, in Liquid, um, like conditionals where you can do if 
some property equals, and you're looking, say, for an image URL, um, you can then print out things. Um, you can say if, say, a, an alert um, level equals warning, then you want to do something. So let's let's actually do that example. Um, let's say um, level equals um, high. And this is going to be a condition where we want to uh, basically say we're going to print out a section if sales equals low. So we're going to end all of this. This is just a really simple um, liquid script. So we can see it all kind of in action. So if the alert level is warning, it should say um, high. And if it's not, it's going to say low. So let's now say it came up. Let's see. That level, level. And let's just pop over to our webhook data here actually this one was critical that's why there we go so if the alert level is critical we're going to say the level is high and if it's a less critical so it came up we're going to say the level is low so ultimately what i've shown you here is how we can create some conditions to use this information to then really shape that ultimate that, that json at the end of the day Okay, so that was some of the advanced stuff. Um, there's a lot more that you can learn around Liquid templates um, on our developer hub, as well as the actual Liquid documentation. Now, for the final demo I want to show is really how we can take this, all of these concepts and send it to one of our services. So in this case, I am going to um, integrate with WebEx. And so, with the WebEx uh, incoming uh, plugin, incoming Webhooks uh, plugin, uh, it makes it really simple for us to do, assign that URL, shape the data um, for our alerts, and really have a quick way of um, getting notifications anytime something happens in our Meraki network. And so the way to do that is you basically have to copy this URL um, that they're going to provide you with. And so in order for me to do that, you can click on the incoming webhooks guide, and that's going to take you to the WebEx uh, page where uh, are the instructions that you can uh, basically enable this URL for a particular room. Now, I've already logged in um, to my WebEx account, and I already have a couple of incoming webhooks set up. But if I wanted to, I could say um, new demo and then I could select a particular room where I want to send all of these messages to. Now, once I have that, it's going to then provide me with, say, a URL where I can send all of these contents. So in this case, I'm going to just quickly demo this with a temporary room. I've copied this URL. And if I then select um, maybe one of the included templates and I paste this end and hit save. Oh, I can't use that WebEx one. Let me do this. Doesn't like it when I do that. I'm going to go, I'm just going to create a new template for this WebEx integration and just show how that works. Oops. All right, so I'm going to create, um, we'll call this WebEx inbound test. And it requires a property called um, markdown. And it requires, then at that point, I can put whatever data that I want in here. So I can just call this test. And let's just make sure this works. All oh, that looks good. I can now paste in that URL and hit send test, oh, I gotta hit save. I can then now send my webhook test and it should have sent it to it. 
And so at this point, um, I should be able um, to pull in my little WebEx room. If I scroll to the bottom, you'll see that this is now my WebEx um, chat. And I have sent a message of test. And so let's just see this a little bit better here. And I can say, let's add some of that other information, like what was the, um, the type? I can put in alert level. If I were to hit generate preview, I'm going to see this test and this critical. I'm going to save that. And um, I'm going to hit uh, my send test here. Um, looks like my permissions. Oh, I'm on the wrong page again. Sorry, guys. Um, but ultimately, when I hit this, um, I will be able to see whatever messages um, I am creating in here. They'll pop over into my other um, world. Um, let me see while I'm in here if I can just test another one here. Yep. Um, the other test I can show you is a different a, a template where the WebEx adaptive cards look a little fancier. And so um, let me just pop back over to that. We can see the WebEx included. Let me pop over to WebEx adaptive cards. There's one. I'm going to edit. Generate preview. So this is a much fancier one um, that's going to do more than just the static text or just that um, simple markdown. Again, it's going to pull in all the capabilities, including conditionals, um, as well as some additional filters that we have to really help shape that data. And if I were to put um, a test, then the adaptive card would show up. And then I would see fancy things like this, where I now have a motion detected event um, that I could see come over into my WebEx. Um, and so that's the basic idea. There's a lot to this, um, but it really gives you a lot of power to how you can create um, these different integrations. You can then share them and you can see all the different uh, possibilities that you can um, really create with uh, webhooks and event-based messaging um, with the Meraki APIs in general. Um, and so with that, um, I would encourage you, uh, again, to um, check out all of our documentations. Um, there is a learning lab as well as other resources um, that, again, walk you through a lot of these basic steps, um, as well as in, um, instructions of how we can um, basically walk through this demo that I've showed you today related to setting up webhooks uh, with WebEx, as well as advanced um, integrations as well. Um, so there's a lot of great resources so that you can really start learning and taking advantage of this. And so, al alternatively, Corey, you could just ask GPT to do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> all the for you. And, and you know what? I mean, since we're on this, um, it's actually a great uh, piece. I did have ChatGPT um, work with me on a few concepts. And ChatGPT was able to generate a list of all of the different integrations that you can now do with Meraki webhook payload templates um, with this service. Uh, and so it basically lists out all the URL, how you would define your authentication, and those different body properties you need to do to shape that template. Um, so yeah, I would say look forward to new integrations coming very soon, um, as we now have a giant list <laughs> of possibilities um, that we can fully take advantage of. Super cool. Thanks, Corey. My pleasure. Um, so uh, that's going to end our session for today. I want to just have a couple closing uh, remarks. Uh, we do have all the content today that uh, Corey has presented. Uh, it's shared to you in the attachments tab of this meeting. Um, also, uh, like we said, this is the fifth and final in a series of webinars uh, around APIs on BrightTalk. Uh, they will all remain there on demand uh, for the foreseeable future. So please do check out uh, those other tools. And then finally, uh, if you just want to get more engaged with Meraki as a, as a networking or hardware product, please check out meraki.com. Uh, there you can schedule a call with one of our specialists or start a trial with free gear or even play around in a sandbox environment. So 
Um, with that being said, I uh, really appreciate, Corey, your time and everybody on the call who has, uh, again, dedicated some of your limited time to spending it here with us today. Uh, we'll right. see you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. All right. Thanks. Bye.